hey everybody welcome back to the channel welcome back to another video so glad to have you hey bookers how you doing as another video we're going to be talking about some of our favorite books but this time around I'm going to be talking about the books that I will be reading in December now I know I've talked about recommendations and I've shared my wrap-ups but I haven't shared some of the newbie books that have are new to my collection of books have you watched my video where I assembled these shelves yeah so I'm talking about some of the books that I've picked up from these shelves where I will be reading them in December and they're new they're different some of them are completely out of the scope of the books that I would read some of them are entirely in the scope of the books that I would read but let's share let's talk I will be sharing with you some of the books that are on my TBR so before we get started thank you so much for choosing me over and over again I really do appreciate it and bookers let's get into the video so uh, one of the first books is a book that is so highly anticipated I love this author I love her so much this is our missing hearts by celeste ing so this book is a dystopian novel very out of you know the scope of range of celeste ing's books but this is a dystopian novel that is set in the future and you follow a young boy by the name of bird gardner who lives with his father a very loving father but quite broken and he works in a library where he you know sort of packs up books and so on and so forth but the book is set they are in America and they are of Chinese descent and it is set in a world where the government is trying to do everything in their power to preserve American culture so when something happens that forces economic instability what ends up happening is that the children or the kids that are not of American descent that have different backgrounds are relocated and the books that are in the libraries are being removed books that are seen as unpatriotic are being removed and this causes a lot of conflict and turmoil within um, the characters of the story the father and bird and they have to navigate all of that so this is quite exciting for me it is fairly a short book it's about 320 pages so I should get through this one quite quickly I'm really really looking forward to this one and again the cover sweetie the cover it's beautiful it's beautiful next book in no order of importance this is loud black girls by let me tell you I think I've covered her name I think I've covered Yomi Ade Adegoke I'm sorry if I've said that incorrectly but this is a short collection of um, short stories so it's 20 short stories that are written by black African authors and I'm so so excited to uh, read these short stories because I've been into collections right I've been into anthologies and this is just essays that involve topics around racism that involve topics around um, you know securing the bag that involves topics around being a woman in today's society so it's quite a few of the essays and it has a forward by Bernadine Evaristo which for me is so exciting Bernadine Evaristo is the one who wrote girl woman other the Booker Prize winner for girl woman other so I'm really really excited to read this I'm looking forward to it can't wait to get in to it Ooh. moving on the next book that I cannot wait to read and I've heard that from the first page you are already listen to me you're already sucked all the way in okay this is detransition baby <laughs> so this is by Tori Peters and this follows two transgender women and one cisgender woman and it follows their lives uh, living together in New York City so you've got Amy right you got Amy you got Reese Amy and Reese are living a great life. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. So in this book, you are following Amy and Reese. So Amy and Reese are living this wonderful life together. They are loving it up. They, they love each other and so on and so forth. The only thing that's missing from their life is a child. So when Amy decides to transition into Ames, this causes a lot of conflict in the relationship and causes Reese to end up doing things that she didn't necessarily want to do which involved sleeping with other married men because now you know Amy has now turned into Ames right so this causes their relationship to break up they break up and they go their separate ways but then 
Once Ames finds out that his boss, Catherine, I think, or Katrina, falls pregnant with his child, it puts a spanner in the work. So it's quite inter intricate. I, I, I have questions. <laughs> Essentially with this, I've got many, many questions that I need answered, but we'll get into it and I cannot wait to read this one. This was long listed for the Women's Prize Fiction um, in 2021. I'm really, really excited to read about transgender and cisgender people and I'm looking forward to it. If you hear anything, Tandy is busy there. You see, this is why I record on these, Tandy is not here. But is the, this one, I'm really, really looking forward to reading this one. This is Daughter of the Moon Goddess by Su Lin Tan. And uh, Charity is the one who got me into wanting to read this book. And because there's different names and all of that, I'm going to read the back of the book for you so that you can know what the synopsis is. This says... There are many legends about my mother. Raised on the moon, Xing, Xing Yin was unaware that she was being hidden from the celestial emperor who exiled her mother for stealing the elixir of immortal, immortality. But when her magic flares uh, and reveals her, Xing Yin is forced to flee her home, leaving her mother behind. Alone, powerless, and afraid, Xing Jin makes her way to the Celestial Kingdom, a land of wonder and secrets. In disguise, she trains alongside the Empress Sun, mastering archery and magic, despite the passion which flames between them. Vowing to rescue her mother, Xing Jin embarks on a quest confronting legendary creatures and vicious enemies. But when forbidden magic threatens the kingdom, Xing Jin must challenge the ruthless Emperor, leaving her torn between losing all she loves or plunging into the realm in of chaos so really really sounds so exciting it is fantasy typically not what i would read but i've been getting into fantasy quite a lot and this one is probably one that i'll pick up now in november even though i'm not quite sure yet but i probably will pick it up now in november and i'm looking really really forward to reading this and hello to that cover the next book is by Holly Jackson, and this is a crime thriller. Now, a lot of the time with crime thrillers, I don't want to know the synopsis as much, okay? I just, I just want to go into it blind, but I will read to you what this one says. It says, your eight hours starts now. The name of the book is called Five Survive, where you have eight hours, six friends, and one sniper. And that's it. The red dot moved again toward the wheel, toward her. She backed away and the dot disappeared. That's the sniper re-emerging on the other side of her, moving, moving beyond the back wheel, a crack in the darkness. Louder now, she, she was outside with it. She flinched, hands up to her ears, and the red dot wasn't there anymore. But there was something else. Ooh, this sounds so, so interesting. This is the arc for um, Five Survive, and I picked this up from the Book Talk Jonathan Ball event, and I'm really, really looking forward to reading this one. I haven't read a thriller in quite a while, so I'm really, really looking forward to reading this. Mm. The next book is Wayward by Amelia Hart. Now, again, this is also a proof copy, which I picked up from the Jonathan Ball event and this follows three generations of women at first the book starts in 2019 where you follow kate i think is her name kate i think her name is kate hang on yes okay so it starts off in 2019 where you follow kate who flees an abusive relationship and she makes her way to a small town where her ancestor her aunt lived and she moves to Wayward Cottage. So when she gets there, there's a lot of history about her family, right? There's a lot of history about the women in her family. And she starts going through some of the things that she finds in the house. As she looks there, she finds out that one of her ancestors in the 16th century was arrested and burnt or killed for being a witch. But now... She's trying to find out how this happened, why this happened, and it's a book that essentially surrounds a lot of gender, a lot of violence towards women from men, and I'm really, really looking for... Wow, my phone is so disrespectful today. And I'm really looking forward to uh, reading this. So, the cover, that neon pink is everything. 
how do you not love it okay that neon pink is everything let me let me just take a sip of my tea chair because wow the next book is the starless sea again another recommendation from charity charity is on youtube and her channel is booked on charity love it I watch her when I want to relax and I know a lot of you guys seem to uh, love my vlogs and you say it's quite relaxing and all of that I highly recommend that you check out charity especially if you love books because she reads a lot and she reads a lot of fantasy and if you're into fantasy you'll love it um, one of her recommendations was this and she insisted and pushed and pushed that I pick up this book and I was just like Girl, what? whatever I'll get it fine this is The Starless Sea by Aaron Morgenstern. This is the author of The Night Circus. And oh my God, we love, we love the floppiness. We love this, this, when you're a reader, this is everything to you. And in this book, we follow Zachary Rollins, who stumbles across a mysterious library. But in this library, he finds this one really, really interesting book, which, you know, talks about stories of long lost lovers and a guided secret club and... Um, just a labyrinth that is filled with hidden stories but then he realizes that it has his story in it the book has his story in it so he's just like what what is this what is this how is my story in this so he starts reading up and searching for clues that will help him discover what is this all about right so then at some point the library gets threatened and Zachary must race through its twisting tunnels and crowded ballrooms searching for the end of his story. So, I mean, it sounds really exciting. It sounds really exciting. I'm looking forward to picking it up. Definitely looking forward to picking it up. The next two books I haven't purchased yet, but I'll probably pick them up within the next week or so. They are here. I'm going to put them both here. And these two are by Jackie Pamutze, who is a good friend and also a South African author. And we've got Sue Nyati, who needs no introduction on this channel. Okay? Sue Nyati needs no introduction on this channel. I love her. I love her so much. And she knows I love her. And I love Jackie, and she knows I love her. So with Jackie's book, we are following Liwa. And the name of the book is called Liwa. And we're following Liwa and Noel, who happen to be very, very good friends. And they grow up together. And um, just friends who are hiding dark secrets, dark desires, right? So when Liwa, they grow up together, and when Liwa loses a parent, Noel comes to her side and comes to her rescue. And they start an architectural business together. This business succeeds, right? This business is well known. It's great. It's famous. They're doing really, really well. But the funny thing is, people start, people around them start dying. And now we don't understand why. So there's a little bit of spirituality attached to this as to why are people starting to die when the business is starting to thrive. Which one is this one? What's going on? And I'm really, really excited to read about Liwa. Liwa is a character who also appears in some of Jackie's other books. Um, but having spoken to Jackie, she told me that, listen, because you like thrillers and you like darker stories, you will like Liwa without having to read the other books to find out more about her. So Liwa is standalone and I can read that one by itself and I can't wait to read it. And then the last, second last book actually, because the last one is over there. The second last book is An Angel's Demise by Sunyati, which follows, it's got a little bit of a spiritual side to this particular story and it says it's an epic saga that explores a contested legacy and the hot trending destiny of family the year is 1977 and the story begins on a farm in Somabusha with the birth of Angel the farm is run by Paul Williams, an outwardly harsh and bigoted man who holds the livelihoods of many in his hands. When Angel's parents join the liberation struggle, she's left in the care of her grandmothers who have been in the service of the Williams family for years. Angel grows up on the farm over three momentous decades that see a convoluted past and inheritance unfold into an equally complicated present. Th wow. Wow. Through her, we see a woman's quest to unearth her identity and assert her independence. In the process of self-discovery, Angel realizes that sometimes you need to be uprooted before you can grow. Oh my God! 
so so excited so so excited i'm very much looking forward to that and the last book which i forgot to pull out from the bookshelf right here don't don't drop anything sister here we go the last book is this again Another push recommendation from Charity. At this point, I feel like Charity should be buying all these books because at, I'm just like, why? What, what is this? What's happening? Um, but this one is something that I've been looking forward to reading because it's all over. It's all over BookTube. It's all over Instagram. It's everywhere. And this is Babel by R.F. Kuang. Now, I haven't read anything by R.F. Kuang. R.F. Kuang is the author behind the Poppy War trilogy series. And this one is very interesting because it's got dark academia vibes. The reason why I want to read this one is because of that. And if you know me, if you know if we were villains, uh, uh, the secret history, I recently finished the Atlas Six, you will know that I love dark academia. I love it. I love it. You can't tell me nothing. So in this one, we follow Robin. And Robin is a young kid born in China who is then adopted and taken to the UK by this really strange and mysterious professor. Professor Loving or Lovely Air or something like that. So the professor ensures that he teaches uh, Robin about language and translation so he teaches Robin in Latin and in Greek and all of that because he wants to get Robin to enroll into one of the most prestigious schools in Oxford, Oxford known as Babel or Babel or whatever it is that you want to call it and he eventually gets into the school and that's great and he learns a lot about um, society and he learns about how magic and language and translation is used in the society by the government to do things that they shouldn't do. And that's where I'm going to end it because really that's all I know. And at this point, that's fine. That's all I want to know. It is a chunker. <laughs> it's a chunker. It's got 537 pages. So it's not that bad because the last book I finished, which is the Atlas 6, has around the same amount of pages. So it's just bigger which makes it a lot more intimidating but i really look forward to reading this and yeah these are the books that i'm going to be reading in december i intentionally chose a lot of fantasy novels because in december i'm more relaxed i'm not at work and i want to get into the fantasy genre without stepping too far away from my thrillers and uh, my uh, literary fiction novels as well so i've got a little bit of everything in there i hope you guys enjoyed this video are you planning on reading any one of these books let me know if you are in the comment section down below if you're not and you're reading something different for uh the december period or maybe you're looking to start reading in January, let me know what it is you're going to be reading. I'm really looking forward to hearing that. And aside from that, I'm going to go. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, I love that for us. <laughs> if you did enjoy the video, love that for us. And I will see you in the next video. Thank you again so much for choosing me over and over again. If you love the video, subscribe, click the notification bell, share it with all your book lover and book reader friends, and I'll see you in the next video. Until then, sayonara!